Hello my dear children welcome to Suflan and this is your teacher Nana and everyone welcome to Suflan and welcome to today's session so Suflan is India's most sincere learning destination for the classes 1 to 10 here we are providing 100% live and interactive classes and personalized attention batch with maximum 6 students. A dedicated academic mentor team to track and work on students' progress. So we cover the syllabus as per the school exam schedule and we are also handling the custom request. So why are you waiting? Get ready and book your free trial class today itself and get ready to explore the art of learning with SwiftLearn. And let's have a quick look at our key features such as detailed progress report and we are providing SwiftLearn academic test series. That's why you can take unlimited practice tests from SwiftLearn throughout this academic year. And we have subjective tests for school exams as well. And everyone, if you are new to this channel, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will never miss any important updates from Suflon and you can find a lot of interesting academic and non-academic topics from Suflon YouTube channel. And alright, today we are going to learn about states of matter. So this is the second part and I hope you remember the first part also and over here. Today we are going to learn about the solubility of a substance in the water. And the second topic is change of state. So these are the two important things we are going to learn within this chapter. Alright, so we learned about the states of matter such as solid, liquid and also gas in the previous chapter. And also characteristics of solid, characteristics of liquid and characteristics of gases as well. Right? Do you remember all these things? Very good. And everything which has mass and it occupies space, then it's called the matter, right? Yes. So if everything has mass and occupies the space, it's called matter. And it can be fruits and vegetables, it can be plants and animals, right? Yes. All right, everyone. So. The states of matter can be divided into three main categories such as solid, liquid and the gas. So these are the three major states of matter. Alright. Have you ever tried Nibupani or have you ever seen it? Yes. So how lemon and sugar and other things get mixed with water easily? Right? When we will put the lemon juice and sugar and try to dissolve it in water, it's quite easy, right? How is this possible? It's because water is known as the universal solvent. Right? Yes. So water is a universal solvent because we can dissolve a lot of things in the water and its solubility is really high than the other liquids. That is why it's known as the universal solvent. Alright, let's move to the next slide. And look at over here. You can find a solvent and a solute, right? So solvent means the water because that is the liquid thing we are using over here. And you can see the water particle. And solute means the foreign body like sugar or the salt which we are trying to dissolve within the solvent that is known as the solute and solubility of a substance is the property to dissolve in some other substance to form a mixture of uniform nature that is known as the solubility of substance in the water so water is a substance and sugar or salt is another substance and we are trying to mix it together to form a mixture of uniform nature. Alright, very good listening everyone. Let's continue. So water is a universal solvent as I mentioned earlier, right? Look at this one. Water is poured in the glass and later we mixed some salt. Mix, mix, mix. And it dissolves quickly, right? Yes, because its capacity or it is capable of dissolving more substances than any other liquid. 
That is why water is known as the universal solvent. Alright, great focus. Let's continue. And some solids like sugar and salt that are dissolved within the water quickly. We can dissolve it very quickly with the water. But what about uh, the other substance like wooden particles and sand? Can we mix all any other substance in the water? No. Some solids like sand and chalk powder do not dissolve in the water, right? Yes, look at this one. We mix with the sand, mix the water with the sand, but it didn't uh, dissolve quickly or it didn't dissolve at all, right? Yes. So, which means the solubility is less. So, can you name any liquid which can be dissolved in water? So, what are the liquids? Have you ever tried to make tea or coffee with the water? Right? Yes. Then we will add some milk with that. With the water. What will happen? It, may, it will mix quickly. So, milk as a liquid which can be easily dissolved in the water. And we have more example like ink, milk and those are miscible liquids. Miscible liquid means if this liquid can be easily dissolved within the water, then they are known as miscible liquid. So, just like ink and milk. Look at this one. Look at the picture. Yes, it's mixed so quickly, right? That is why it's known as miscible liquids. All right. And what is immiscible liquid? And some liquid that do not dissolve in the water, such as oil, petrol and etc. So if you use oil or petrol or kerosene or something and try to mix with the water, what will happen? It do not dissolve and you can see a layer will form on the top of the water. On top of the water. That is why it's, uh, those liquids are immiscible liquids. Because all those liquids cannot be dissolved in the water. Alright. So, can gases mix with water? Have you ever tried to drink cola or Coca-Cola or soda or Sprite? Any other things? Yes. So, which means carbon dioxide get dissolved in the water under certain pressure. Then we will get Coca-Cola, soda and etc. So, solubility of gases in the water is possible. Alright. Let's revise. Solid matter such as dash and dash does not get dissolved in the water. Do you remember what are those things? Like sand and chalk powder, right? And dash is called the universal solvent. What is the answer? Water. So water is called the universal solvent. And this question. So you have to find the answer for this question and let's comment below in the chat box and let's see who can win. And aquatic animals inhales dash and dissolved in dash. Let's find the answer for this question and let's see. So changes of state, change of state. You can see the solid, liquid and the gas over here, right? And look at the solid state. The intermolecular attraction is really high, so it's closely related, situated, right? And the space is also very less. And look at, look at, look at over here within the liquid state. The intermolecular attraction and the space is less compared to the solid. And look at the gas states. The, it's very, very less. The intermolecular force and space is very less. It's like freely floating. So now let's get know about change of state. Can we change the state of any matter? Yes, we can change the state of matter by increasing or decreasing certain temperature. So the solid one, look at over here. This one, okay. So we use the ice cube and we will keep it outside, right? So we won't keep it inside the fridge, we will keep it outside of the fridge. What will happen? It will melt and it will turn to be water. And if we will boil the water, what will happen? It evaporates, the gas will form. So we can change 
the state of matter by increasing or decreasing the temperature. Again, if we will keep the liquid within the fridge, what will happen? The freezing will take place and it will turn. It will turn as the solid one again. All right. So the type of change can be can be divided into two categories. The first one is a physical change and the second one is a chemical change. So these are the two possible changes can be happen within the states of matter. And let's talk about the physical change. Physical change means the change in which no new substance is formed is called physical change. So when we will take an example of the uh, ice cube, it turned as the water, but new other substance, nothing formed, right? It was just water and the ice cube itself. And it occurs when there is a change in state, size, shape and color of the substance, right? Because uh, when it was a ice cube, it was solid. Then it turned as the water, then it turned as the gas itself. So the physical forms will change, but no, no new substance will form. That's why it's known as the physical change. And important characteristics of physical change. No new substance is formed. Most of the physical changes are temporary, right? Because once it will turn us the water, we can again turn the water into ice cubes. And very little energy is either abs absorbed or releases in a physical change. A temporary change in color may take place in a physical change. So everything is temporary, right? Yes. Now let's talk about uh, the chemical change. Before that, these are the examples of the physical change. So such as boiling water, shredding of paper and breaking of glass. And all those things, no new uh, items or the things will produce. It's just the change in size, shape and quantity. All right. Now let's talk about the chemical change. The changes in which one or more new substance reacts to form a new substance or substance break to form one or more new substance are called chemical changes. Such as when we will mix the yogurt with the milk, it will go, uh, it will go under uh, fermentation and the next day we can find the yogurt, right? The curd itself. So the, a chemical change happened within the curd. A chemical change involves in a chemical reaction which forms a new product. All right. So it's entirely different from the physical change. And these are the characteristics of the chemical change, such as radiation or absorption of heat, production of sound, change in the color of the substance, change in the smell of substance, and formation of gas, formation of solid as a residue. And it is not reversible. It's completely irre irreversible. So these are the examples for the chemical changes. Formation of curd from the milk, ripening of fruits, and formation of wine from the grapes. So when we mix the milk with the yogurt, we can find the curd, right? So that chemical change happened. And ripening of fruit, the color will change and it will get soft. And formation of wine from the grapes. And once it's fermented, you can see uh, or you can find a gas, right? Within the wine. So it's, it's a chemical change. All right. Now let's revise. Mixing salt figure as a dash change. What is that? It's a physical change. Because cutting and uh, chopping, all these are physical change. Mixing also. And digestion of food is a dash change. What do you think? It's completely a chemical change because the macro, the macro molecules will be uh, break, will break down to simpler molecules by the enzymes which is present within the stomach. And chemical changes, change is reversible. It's false. Chemical change is irreversible. It's not reversible. It is irreversible. Yes, all right. Very good focus, everyone. Let's continue. 
So let's play this activity. When we put an ice cube in a beaker and it melts, this is an example of chemical change, physical change analysis and, and analysis and condensation. What is the answer? It's the physical change. Alright. The substance that is present in the largest amount in solution. What is that? It's the solvent. Right? Solvent. Let's check the answer. All right. And some liquids that do not dissolve, dissolve in the water. Such liquids are cold dashed liquids. Is it miscible or immiscible? Those are immiscible. Okay. All right. Let's try that again. Yeah. Those are immiscible liquids. Let's find the answer. And all right. Yes. So when we put an ice cube in the in a beaker and it melts, this is an example of physical change. Good job. And the substance that is present in the largest amount in a solution is the solvent. Just think about the water. And some liquids that do not dissolve in water, such liquids are cold immiscible, right? Such as kerosene, oil, and so many more. Okay, all right. And everyone, today we learned about the solubility of substance in the water, change of state. And thank you everyone for coming today. I hope you enjoyed the session. And if you like the session, please subscri sub subscribe and press the bell icon so you will never miss any important updates. And please like, comment and share. Thank you everyone. Have a nice day.